good evening. Tonight we watched the Born Identity, mm -hmm. Born Identity, and uh, let's identify the four through lines. What's the overall story about? Uh, catching a criminal. Uh, uh, can you be a little more specific? Who's trying to catch? Uh, Damon right, uh, uh, Damon is going to catch this. Mm. CIA search for assassin cleaning up the mess after failed assassination attempt. Okay, that's that's, that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Because that Almost. sort of hits all of the yeah many different perspectives on the mess that they're all trying to figure out. Yeah. Failed assassination. All right, that sort of kind of, yeah, the cleaning up tells sort of what the story is about, and the failed assassination is sort of the starting point for that, the initiating point. Not necessarily the point of attack in the movie, but that's kind of... That's the backstory. That right, the backstory that everything. led to the everything else. Okay, uh, main character? Ed Damon. Uh, yeah, Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne, yeah. John Michael Kane, whatever you want to call him. What? It's a man of many names, but well, yes. Um, influence character. Influence. Or possible choices. Mary is Maria. 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 <laughs> but I've seen it a couple times. Uh, anybody else, or is that Conklin? Conklin? Yeah. Oh, Conklin. That's his boss, right? Mm -hmm. His former boss. Oh, okay. Cooper. Chris Cooper. Chris Cooper. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's spelled his name. K L I N. Mm -hmm. Okay. Conklin. Oh, All right. Now, Jason Bourne, Marie, relationship. What kind of relationship? Uh, romance. Co okay. survivors romance. Yeah. Romance. Um the Jason Bourne Conklin relationship. Boss Mr. Protege or <laughs> boss employee. Alright. Good. Okay, so let's just put that there. Now you'll notice I put up here something I don't normally do. And that is, over on the side here, I have protagonist and antagonist. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think understanding that will help under, help us understand what's going on in the story. Because there is a very clear distinction between the player who is the main character, Jason Bourne, as a main character versus his function in the overall story. We don't have a goal yet, so we don't know exactly. Um, we can't cast them exactly, but who would you think is the protagonist and who do you think is the antagonist based on just sort of a, a gut reaction or what your sense of the story is? I, uh, it feels like, I don't know, my first gut reaction would be the, the uh, gray haired guy, like the top executive. So the top guy, whoever that is, yeah. felt like a, a director a, guy. The director guy felt like a consider character, but the but Chris Cooper felt like a pursue character maybe. Okay, so you you so um, the goal then is to capture him, capture this I, this rogue. Yeah, I don't know. How to, but if it's to if it's to just if it's clean up the mess. Well, no, 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 no. Just be, that's not a definition of the goal. Okay. That's yeah. just the definition of what's going on. And if it's cover, if it's cover his tracks, then then cover one's track as the goal. I like cover the cover the so that it doesn't blow up in uh, in in, uh, in the real world. Like everybody gets knowledge of Treadstone. If it's covering up about the Treadstone thing, then I see him as a protagonist. And as but a, is that what it's is that what it's about? Is that what the story is seems to be about? I don't know if it's if getting Jason is a requirement to the goal, or if getting Jason is the goal itself. Well, who seems to be the pursue character? 
Yeah, I think Jason is a lot. Well, it depends on how you define the goal. I mean, yeah. you can say uh, there's a goal that he's definitely pursuing, and that's just trying to uncover his who he, who he is. And but that's is. but 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 that's like only his concern. No. I, I'm, that's also well, it's Hannah Marie's concern, but everybody else is trying to figure out what he's doing too, right? Okay. Well, I know, but they know who he is. He doesn't even know who he is. Right. Well, that's what that's his problem. Right. That's his. That's the main character's deal. Right. That's that's so the. Everybody else identity. is trying to capture him. Right, but that's so, but but is I it know. about is it about capturing him? Or is it about covering everything, hiding everything, or finding out whatever it is? I know at the end of the story, I felt a sense of relief that um, the assassins, try, that the, the plot Jason was working against had failed. So right. it might be... Right. Okay. I think cover-up is, is the top level, top level, which means... A lot of possible things necessary. Yeah, but okay, if you're looking at the good guys and the bad guys, okay. who are the good guys and who are the bad guys? <laughs> right, and the bad guys are the Treadstone folks. So are they CIA? I don't think that was established exactly. They did not really. Doesn't matter. Whatever they're, they're, they're agency. They're oh, they showed they showed CIA at the beginning. Oh, right. Okay. okay. Yeah, and it also in the it's pretty clear in the subsequent ones. But okay. the Treadstone guys yeah. seem to be the bad guys. Yes. They're trying to get away with murder okay. and we're covering up all this stuff that happened. It's not about the assassination. That's the backstory. It's about what the blazes went on here. Yeah, what happened? You know, and what is Jason Bourne doing? We can't figure out what he's doing, right? But they definitely seem to be the bad guys. Right. And so it seems that... Jason Bourne is the one who is driving the story toward whatever the goal is, right. and they're the ones that are trying to prevent him from doing whatever he's doing, um, which is finding out more and more information and having, uh, along the way, other people find out potentially uh, more information. Um, but he's, but it, it doesn't seem, it's not a, like, I don't, now I'm, I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be an obtaining issue. It's not like they're trying to capture him. That no. seems somewhat incidental because... They send people to kill him pretty early on. Right, as right. As soon as I, they I, find out, it's killed. Yeah, I know, but, and, and, and the Chris Cooper guy, he, he says, he, he does you know, state emphatically, I want him dead by midnight or something like that. Right, um, and that doesn't happen. Right. Well, but okay, yeah. But then, so then it's like okay, then another way to get him, another way to get him. Right. Those say that seems to be a step toward something else rather than the conclusion. Um, for a moment, before we go over there, let's pop over to the story outcome and judgment. First of all, story judgment, good or bad? Good. Good, good. because he ends up with the girl, and he's... apparently they're both safe. And he's happy. And he's happy. Until the sequel. He's very clearly <laughs> happy. Well, that's everything's fine until an inequity is introduced, and that's what that's what the, how they start the, the sequel. Okay, so you have good. Although there was lingering inequities that were outside the scope of this, that were set up in this one, mm -hmm. but were not at all addressed. As in, why did he lose his memory? No, as in, well, why, why did the guy? Why did the chief, the gray-haired guy, cover up everything? Because there was actually something else going on, and his partner was not really happy about it, so they're the ones who tried to, in a sequel, clean it up fully, because he wasn't dead. Okay, mm -hmm. now, is it a success or failure story, and why? Yes. What does it feel like? Does it feel like a personal it feels like a triumph success. or a happy ending? It feels like a happy ending. Pardon? Like a success. Okay, and what is achieved? Well, the uh, we, well, Jason understands what the heck was 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 Treadstone. And, well, and well, he doesn't. He, he's not the. And one who he man. was, well, and he his part, uh, part, and right, all those questions that he has at the beginning. Not only personally, but in the bigger picture. Why do I know? How many people are in this room? Why do I know all these different things? Why are these people trying to kill me? Yeah. You know, 
those all are answered, and, and he's alive and he's happy. So it seems to be success. The reason I want to bring, I want to answer that, is it will help identify who the protagonist then is, because the protagonist will be will succeed. If it's a success story, the protagonist is after the goal. So who seems to succeed in this? It appears that it's Jason Bourne as the as a objective story player, the former assassin, who is now a different person because he lost sort of his identity, that he regains he, he regains his memory but he does but not his identity. Right? right? Um, so and that's so it's a success story. Right. So so Jason becomes the protagonist and Je and Treadstone in all it's as a group, obviously we could break it down into who's the antagonist or who's you know who's prevent and who's reconsider and all that stuff. We don't really know. <coughs> but that gives us a frame of reference as to how to answer the main character questions because we can separate the functions of the protagonist away from the main <coughs> character. Because they're because it's a thriller and it's a mystery, you know, you kind of don't know exactly what part of it is actually essential and what part of it, what part of it is story weaving. Mm -hmm. You know, we obviously get some of the story weaving by finding out the backstory. Sort of at the end, we get that dropped in. But if we put that at the beginning, then we'd know, okay, what was happening objectively. But, but you know where that the memories that were lost, so that main character. But the fact that he didn't have them is part of the story. And so the goal appears to be less about with him as a, a protagonist. What is the goal? And I mean, I'm not saying you know necessarily identify the type. You can if you want, but it's not necessary. But what generally speaking would the goal be? We've already sort of reconstructing it. what um, what happened. We, uh, Reconstructing his role, reconstructing prior events. Right. Oh, yeah. Sort of recovering the born identity, because that's the big question mark that he has as protagonist. He doesn't know who this born person is, and he uncovers more and more and more about it, and the more he uncovers about it, doesn't really like what he's finding. But it's interesting because you'll notice that when he's learning about essentially himself, it's from a very objective way. Mm -hmm. You know, he's seeing it as an outsider, not as someone exploring what's going on inside themselves. But he's seeing these things that that person, you know, Jason Bourne, did, yeah. and 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 how that is actually contrasted with where who he had, the identity that he has. When he wakes up, and the person he sort of is when the story starts. Okay. Okay. So I think that'll help us focus on on sort of the rest of these things. Um, actually, I'm going to depart a little bit further. Um, let's go to the domains. Let's mm -hmm. address the domains because I think that'll also help us is a lot. Can we possibly? Are we still in the main? Can we talk about the influence character a little more? Because I just sure. I I feel like Marie is definitely stronger. Right. Well, the the whole reason I brought that up is I think Conklin is the antagonist. Okay. Because that boss employer relationship is overall effectively story. what's going on in that that overall story. So she is the influence. Character. Right. He's really the one who's who is. He's the one who created that identity. You know, he was the one, and you find out more in the subsequent stories. But he's part of who he was, mm -hmm. and he knows it, and he's the one who's responsible for that idea and, and responsible for getting rid of that person who's got that identity. Um, and it's supposed to am answer for getting everything that that identity is done and doing. Uh, what is that? Of yes, lots of exposition. But I mean, I think that's what this boss employer thing. Is. I think really that's 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 in the objective story in the big picture. I don't think that's really in a, a, a relationship. 
that's a passionate relationship. The last scene is there's a lot of emotion, but I don't really. It, his he's acting much more like a drill sergeant, you know, get get it together, a soldier, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah. I think that that's really not a part of the subjective story. Doesn't mean there might not be some things he says or does that step in occasionally to, to push when Marie's out of the picture, but that last scene being the one place where Marie has dropped out, so he may step in for that last mm -hmm. big push, which he kind of he does in that last scene. Yeah. He kind of does that last big <clears throat> um, So there may be a little bit of dual functionality there. But for the most part, as long the, the parts where Marie exists, he really has that more objective function. Mm -hmm. Okay, and but he the question is, we'll look when we find out what domain it is, we may be able to see, oh yeah, it's very consistent with that domain. If it is, then it, in terms of his function in that scene, then it's a, you can see it is a handoff. All right, so. Where do we see? Uh, um, I'm actually going to open this up and suggest you look over at the, the chart because I think you, you want to look at not only the domain, the, the classes, but I think also look at the types because I think those are much stronger than the, um, the classes. So, do we have any suggestions for something perhaps pretty obvious? <laughs> See, like, I was not saying anything. Yeah, well, yeah, this, this might be in the overall story, but um, Jason seemed very involved in, in his mind and memory. Right. I would Impulsive responses, very strong contemplations, yeah. you know, innermost desires, but, you know, I, I mean, memories is really obvious. Right. Impulsive responses in terms of things he'd been programmed to be able to learn, uh, do very quickly. But, you know, in contemplations, it, you know, I, the, you know, the original word was conscience, and that's basically, you know, conscious, con con conscious not conscience, but conscious, yeah. And he, he's, he's, you know, uh, uh, he, he's trying to get it out of, you know, memory and into, you know, his forward brain, his frontal lobe. Um, so, you know. So that being which through line? For the main character. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think you were talking about it possibly as the um, in as the main, as the overall story, but I think it's that's him as a main character. He does seem to be very clearly stuck in in memory. I mean, like from the very first time we see him, where he has lost his memory, um, which is interesting because that puts uh, you the overall story either in understanding or developing a plan, um, and. Uh, where do we see the overall story? Uh, I, well, learn, learning is learning is really big too. I mean, um, scattering information. There's a lot of whether that's the concern or not, but that that's, yeah, but that's not for the whole thing. There's always about the under, trying to understand from everybody, not just Jason. You see, certainly, he's he seems as the protagonist, he is going to be you know heavily involved in everything. But you also trying to see, you see the treadstone from trying to understand what the heck happened, what is going on, who, who is this, what, why is he acting this way, um, you know, sort of the try to create these misunderstandings in the, the you know, the very end you've that little coda with, oh, it's nothing, you know, let's sweep it under the, under the table, you know, so that it, it doesn't seem to go beyond the that, but beyond that, but the story's already over, so we didn't need to worry about it because it's not about Treadstone hiding it. That's one of the things is it's not about Treadstone successfully hiding the operation. It's about Jason Bourne sort of figuring out what was going on. Um, you know, Marie's trying to understand what's who this person is and why they're acting this way and why they're being chased and what's going on and. Um, so I think understanding clearly is, is, is seems to be the goal, whereas you do see an awful lot of doing. You see a lot of obtaining. You see a lot of the you know learning, gathering information, um, as well as understanding. So okay, so so that gives us a, a, a pretty good idea um, 
about what the domains is, which puts the re the relationship of manipulation or psychology, which I think. But so the like, so he's a beer and it's a stop story. A start yes, story. Start, start story. A start story is a beer. It's, it's, now look at the backstory. No, no, no. You're confusing him with Jason Bourne. All right. This is the difference between what the protagonist and what the story may demand versus the character. Right. Jason Bourne, the assassin, was a doer. Until what? Until he, he can't do a child, so he's a beer. Until he changes. Yeah. He's like, I, I can't I'm do it. And he switches to a beer. Yeah. And he, he, he walks away and doesn't even try to protect himself. He just walks away and gets shot and falls in the water and wakes up a beer. Who? For something you know, that makes, you know, he, he's, he's, he's way, he's well, like well, a we, soft story, that's all, that's all I want. No, he's, he's, no, 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 because, you, I mean, remember, he's running, he's moving toward it. He yeah. is not, not waiting for some, he's not, he, A, he's not his own problem, so if it was a changed character, he doesn't have a chip on his shoulder. No, he's, that's he's trying story. to fill in the hole, the missing yeah. part, and, or, if it was a steadfast character, He's not waiting for something to stop, because otherwise, you know, he is, he is absolutely he's trying to get to. things going yeah. again, because yeah. his life has stopped, and he's trying to figure out, I can't move on until I understand, right. who was I, and what? why are these people trying to kill me? <coughs> so, either way you look at it, whether it's a change or steadfast, it definitely falls into that stark feel. Yeah. So, he, he's, he's an active beer, in that he doesn't initiate conflict. He himself, but right, he's very active. Yeah, there's no question about that. But he's not a. The, when he goes into action, it's it's it's, it's all, always story, defensive. The kung fu. Kind right, and it's always in the overall story. It's yeah. not not his. It's not. Well, it kind of comes anything. from impulsive responses. It's, it's, Some of it, right, which is yeah. the most doer part of that um, <clears throat> domain. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, he. But um, it, you know, the thing he, is that what he's concerned about is his loss of memory. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why it's. Focused there, and it explored everywhere, but it's focused in that one place. Um, yeah. So that that man, controller. now the only place I'd say that is underdeveloped yeah. is the gets, influence character. The yeah, I, mean, I was going to say about the beer thing. He he very easily takes on an identity when he gets on the phone with somebody. Right. And he's he's you know uh -huh. instantly yeah. adaptable. Yeah. You know, yeah. and he takes on a persona when he needs to. Yeah. Right, and he needs to find out about the boat, so he, you know, impersonates someone. And the, 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 the beer doer uh, approach is that, I keep forgetting, is that in, uh, more related to the overall story or the MC story? Uh, the, the main the, character. The, yeah. That's why it's in the yeah, main, MC main, main character. Okay. Yeah, main character yeah. Okay. Yeah. approach. Okay. Sorry. Right. So. Okay, so we have our main character is, an act, is, is in that fixed attitude. Um, and again, this is where I think fixed attitude as a label doesn't work. The mind works better because you're talking about someone whose mindset or trying to essentially understand their yeah. He's in his mind a lot. Well, it's it's you know, who am I? You know, it's not an attitude, but that you know that's that's where sometimes these labels we have that make it easier to understand kind of limit out some of the other less typical uses of it. But we see our main character there. <coughs> we see our overall story and activity, which you pretty much could figure out even if you didn't look at the types, just because, of, I mean, everybody's trying to kill him, and he's trying to get stuff, and I mean, they're running away, and I mean, it's just constant activity. And when you were, I'm sorry, when you were saying, can you re, uh, restate that, that uh, metaphor you were using, like, he's actually moving towards it, is uh, that's for the uh, okay, that's a start character. character. Right, it's a right. hole in the heart, so you have to, right. you, there's a gap. <coughs> but him being step step up. Fast, uh, the, the, the We don't know about that yet. Yeah, well, we don't know if he's a change or steadfast yeah. character yet. But if he's, a, if he's a change, if he's a steadfast character, <coughs> then you're holding out for something to begin. Holding out for something to begin. Right, so in other words, I'm, I'm trying to, rather than being put upon and trying to survive it, yeah. I'm, I'm, Troubled and trying to last long enough. Yeah. So uh, usually it's last for something good, but that's 
you know, yeah. not necessarily. Okay. Um, it could also be some, you're, you're, you've got a, a stop could also be someone holding off against things that are really good that are trying to, to lure him off the path. Yeah. You know, stop stop giving me all these things. I, I, I I'm going that way. You know, so you it's not positive or negative, but we yeah. tend to look at them as the negative version of it. Okay. So, um, so we, we were saying about the IC uh, in situation. Um, uh, oh, the past. Yeah. Underdeveloped. I can, I can see why, I can't see why the past necessarily, but I can see why she'd be in situation. Um, when she's introduced, wasn't there something about um, he, she didn't have a place to live and she, she well, needed money? And, you know. I mean, once she's tied to him, her, uh, her she becomes essentially she is one of these people that are defined by her relationship to him and all of her her past is looked into all the things she's done you know all that stuff becomes sort of like common knowledge and all the people that you know her family other people she's talked to you know her records the phone records all that stuff is sort of what defines her she doesn't have an identity except in terms of what they can find about her past and you know, and that's not who she is, but that's what she's being stuck with. And because she's also now an associate, she's an accomplice under scrutiny. She is basically, you know, painted with the same brush. Even though she had really, it was, it was a happenstantial, but that doesn't matter. You know, you can always use, in stories, you, do, you can use coincidence to create problems, but you don't use that's coincidence to solve them. And so that's how, that's how that coincidental contact turned into her sort of nightmare mm -hmm. for a while. Um, and she has no money, but she also has the car. The car sort of is the thing that mm -hmm. makes her versus somebody else why why he picked her. And she's got a car, and he needs a car, so hey. Nice, nice right time. Yeah. Okay. And understanding. So let's, uh, based on this, we can... Um, answer two questions without even looking, we can go over and say we know that he's going to be a beer. So his preference is as the newborn. Well, let's just make sure you swallow it. Okay. <laughs> uh, as the new Jason born, he, his preference is not to act, but actually to try to work things out internally, try to figure it out as opposed to externalize it. Um, we also know that he's a Stark character, which means that basically either he is waiting for something to begin, for his life to begin, which that works, or he has to sort of, you know, he's missing something from him and he needs to grow into it before he can change, if he's a change character. Um, I mean, that's this, you know, so the stuff, would, from that perspective, the stuff is growing out and the stuff is growing in. Too. Yes, that's the stop. Okay. Stop yeah. doing what you're doing. Yeah. Start doing something you're not growth. doing. You still yeah. have to grow. Right? Yeah, you, yeah. you have to grow to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you could just yeah. make a choice and then, oh, I'm going to change and yeah. change. Yeah. That's where the character development or the character arc is, is in the approach. Right. Now, popping down to the story driver, I think we can also answer this one based on a couple of things. But these, is it seem to be action-driven or decision-driven, and why? What kind of examples do we see? I would say action, because the inciting incident would seem to be them losing contact with uh, with Jason. Or, or well... Well, actually, start, start at the beginning of the movie. They see the a body's gun. found in the water. He's discovered floating in the water with a bullet in him yeah. and... Uh, yeah. Did they find the tracking of a device? A tracking device. Yeah, don't they find that right right off? Well, yeah. 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 And so, you know, and and no memory. So I mean but the finding the fisherman finding him floating in the water starts it off. They didn't yeah. find him. <laughs> you have to know the story. And there's no there's no deliberation. I mean, they immediately go, guy in the water got to pull him out. Right. And he becomes a deer in an action story, which is nice because out of sync. He's a fish out of water. Right. That was the I, other. I, that was the uh, yes, exactly. That was the other reason you could determine it is that he's a reluctant player. He feels like he's not. He doesn't. He's not like yes, I'm gonna gung ho run forward. It's like why is everybody after me? 
type of thing. And okay, I'll only reluctantly or spontaneously <laughs> respond, uh, which is different than some of the other movies. But but that's where he is in in this movie. So yes, so those you know ultimately it requires an action to wrap it up. You know he has to go there, and the people that are after him have to stop chasing him, which they do. You know they 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 say okay we're closing it down, cleaning it up. And once once uh, Conklin is eighty six. The story is effectively over. The overall story is over. Um, the okay, linear or holistic? Do we see him as a linear thinker or as a holistic thinker? And can you come up with any examples? We can leave that if if need be. So that's not wrong. Just well, I, I you know, it was, think, well, was yep. Jeff. Uh, there was a blip where I caught oh linear. Um, he was talking to somebody, but I forget why. <laughs> I forget the context. Well, he's he's he follows the account number. He looks, you know, he's following clues. Yeah. He's following yeah. clues. He's, you know, he 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 calls the hotel to find out about John Michael Kane or whatever that name was. And he and keeps on call. You know, he calls and calls, calls. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he goes down the list, and yeah. And, he, and, and he she's the one. She's the girl is actually the one that says something like, "It's the people who." It's the people who hired you or the bosses. No, she's the one. And she makes those relationship connections, yeah, right? She, she, she's the one who comes up with the idea to just ask directly. To the, I mean, she sees the context of things. She's like, oh, in this particular kind of maybe I could do this. Just walk the mask. Oh, you mean the bank? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She just goes from A to D as opposed to A B. Right. Goes, oh, right. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yes, that's a that's a good example. So you can't count the number of steps. You <laughs> count the number of people that's super around you. <laughs> Right. And then, <laughs> no, I'll just ask. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, now let's uh, let's might as well do the last easy one. Time lock or option lock, and why? Option lock. Option lock. lock. Fine. Now why? How many classes does it take to kill Jason? I, yeah. um, right. Or how many how many steps does it take before he figures out what's going on? As a protagonist, it's about him. Finding out, so he, they they are they can try to kill him. That doesn't work. He can figure out what's what happened to him. Figure out who what what who he was, and then how he fits in with yeah. the, the antagonist. And that's when the climax happens. And they, and so they he's, do sort of make it on the other side that the director is very impatient with Conklin and is going, you know, what else can you do? He's right. He's so sort of pushing right. him through options. Yeah. This is a. <clears throat> I think this relates to the question you asked me, or one of the two of you, um, about, I think it was you, David. Um, when you have an option lock, the characters seem to be very aware, very aware of time. Time yeah. seems to run out. Oh, that was you? Yeah. yeah. Time seems to run out. When you have a time lock, the char that's right, now I remember the question. The, t the characters seem to be very aware of how many options they have left. Okay. So what's the limit, because it's not variable, that's the thing that's squeezing. But what you have that's, you know, you still have to play with is the other one. So that's why you have Conklin's like, he's got a real, I mean, uh, his boss, like, I gotta get this, this has to be done now. You know, this is really strong time mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. because he's seeing the options narrowing and, and, and is aware that when those options run out, it's going to be a Crisis, and he's trying to avert the crisis, right. and that's why characters do that. They're trying to end it prematurely so it doesn't blow up, mm -hmm. okay. so they can, you know, so the consequence won't come about if they're on the wrong side of the the uh, equation. Um, yeah. okay. Is that a better uh, help ex mm -hmm. as an explanation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was exactly something that he said that reminded me of what. How to express that better. Okay, so now our main character resolve, change or steadfast. I am interested in hearing. Um, I might suggest we not hmm. answer it. Um, but what do we what do you think? I'm going with steadfast. Okay. Steadfast. Yeah. Can I hear reasons? Yes, of course. Okay. No, the, the, the reasons are much more important than the choice. <laughs> well, um, at least from the early on we see him 
he's he's anti-violence as much as he can be, and he stays that way all the way through the story. In other words, unless they're attacking him, he's putting the gun away. He th he throws away so many guns in this thing; it's ridiculous. So he's really fighting the, the opportunity for violence, and he does a lot of really kind things for her. In other words, he's gracious, and he still is at the end. I mean, it, in uh, his his goal or his original protagonist thing as a uh, assassin, he's really, really, really trying to put it aside, and ultimately that's what he sticks with. He doesn't. He never becomes an assassin joyfully. So if he kills somebody, it's only because he has to, and that's kind of his modus operandi from start to end. Right. He wants yeah. out. Yeah. Seems like he doesn't want. He does not want to. He does not to want the born identity. Right. It's like, it's like the beginning. I mean, if we get rid of all the story weaving and we get like chronologically, where when he refused to kill the child, the, the yeah, the, the, the child, guy. it's like it's it's almost like it's it's the it's the crisis point of a previous story where he just exactly what it is. Education levels, and he's just like, okay, now from now on, I'm going to stick to it, and then from the end the, right. until the end, beginning and end, he just won't kill for yeah. Right, and then you know, and the inequity is is that the, he has changed, but the world hasn't. So the world is still expecting him to behave. In his old capacity as a as an assassin, and that's not who he is anymore. Especially since he lost that part of him, and when he lost his memory, he didn't lose his skill set, but he lost the identity from you know the, the, how he identifies himself. You know, sort of sort of he had a reboot of his OS, but he still had all the applications. <laughs> and yeah. and in the also, in the previous, I mean, they established it on the story that in his previous role, he was nobody. He was a man with no identity. He was supposed to be switching all the time, and you know, you're nobody. You're kind of just whatever we want you to. He be was a blank slate without, a blank a, without, slate. A, but not a person. Right. And he woke up as a person, that. and you know, without some, you know, objective personality to adopt, he really sort of grown a, a personality. Yeah, and even I mean, even though you can tell in the scene where he separates from the girl, that he really, really would love to stay with her, but for her sake, he has to push her away. So he's a guy now who's very committed to finding some people who he's himself with, but he figures he can't maintain that as long as the bad guys are after him. So it's I think I mean I see lots of steadfastness in him, which he finally gets the payoff at the end. Right. Okay. All right. Everybody okay with that? All right, good. All right, so let us uh, go to the software. Nice and fast. Let me start up the computer. All right, and David, would you turn off one of the lights, please? Yeah, I mean, just so you guys can see it. Meanwhile, I will make the choices. Skip that. I'm just testing. Is important. All right, so let us go to the theme browser and which domain do we all can overall story of the main character? Let's do the overall story because I think we have some nice material there. 
You've got instinct, conditioning, senses, and interpretation, which I think is really, 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 really strong. Um, and yeah. so we're just focused on that one. Uh, obviously, conditioning is one of the primary issues there because he's doing things and he doesn't even understand why he's doing them. May not be. Although that feels like a catalyst, honestly. That, that's probably a very. It, it might be. I mean. You know, you can, you can easily see, you know, senses, instincts, interpret all of those are strongly in the protagonist, the training that he's got, and this this uh, assassin without an identity trying to find out who he is and what he's doing and where his place is, and everybody else trying to figure out what the heck is he doing. They're, they're also trying to live by instinct. Conklin is trying to use his own instincts to counter to it. So if we look at the elements that we've got here, within instincts, we've got knowledge, thought, ability, desire. In senses, we've got actuality, perception, aware, and self-aware. Conditioning, we've got inertia, change, projection, and speculation. In well, it's interesting. I think the one possible here is the issue. <laughs> yeah, so it can't be a catalyst. Right, where I think your catalyst might be here. Yeah. In very instinctive senses. Yeah. And in, no, oh yeah, in stickers, that's it. Interpretation, order, chaos, equity, inequity. Which of those can we sort of rule out based on <laughs> whatever? Or rule in? Which, which do you like? Which don't you like? Not as crazy about instinct and the desire and the uh, Okay, I mean, you do have the aware, self aware. I think yeah, it's a really, it's a really good strong main yeah. character thing. Um, but also, the, I mean, also maybe logistically because they don't want any of these guys to become self aware. So, yeah. You know, from a, I mean, ability is a, you know, is any of is a big deal. Um, I guess desire is. is um, you know, inertia, change, projection, speculation. Order, chaos, Not sure that the, these. Well, I mean, equity. Equity is what equity wants, I think. Equity, inequity, order, yeah. chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, well, shall we look and see what the main character's got? Maybe we can sure. find it better there. All right. So, within memories, we have truths. Truth, falsehood, evidence of suspicion, I think, which again, I think that's a really strong, strong quad in terms of exploration. Um, now, interestingly, in in terms of evidence, you've got self-aware, aware, ability, desire. I think yeah, that's a well, really good yeah, quad. Yeah. Because it has elements yeah. of the other ones that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. um, so the, it's not as much about so well, searching for whatever he I mean, he's trying to figure. He's trying to find evidence yeah, of who the heck he was. Right. I mean, that's the and and everything he finds is like really challenges the sense of who he is yeah. versus what everybody yeah. expects him to be. And it's not as much about what is true or false. It's like he's, he's, right. it's more about what the hell is it. It's, it's, right, right. Well, truth and falsehood are the the, the uh, measures. measures yeah, yeah measure. they's measuring. What is this evidence or in, what am I just? Suspecting or am I under suspicion? Um, so I think that's actually a, a really, really good issue. Which yes. then um, we see ability, awareness. Well, certainly self aware would not be a problem. That would be, I mean, or the, no, I mean, it would be ability a, is huh? is an ability is trying. Ability seems to be because that's the thing he keeps, he's got all these abilities that. Are just superhuman that he has understand. a real hard time with. Yeah, that just, and of course at the end, he never. I mean, he never is a. He's, if he's a steadfast character, he doesn't give in to his desires or follow his desire. He's, you know, um, so we if we say that's the main character problem. Pardon? It's over. Of course, I picked everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's our record. Okay, well let's look at the let's, let's save. 
Look at the root of Uh, uh, oh, continue. Uh, that's why I save. Save. Make copy. Uh, B I. Continue. I'm going to quit. I'm going to restart it. Uh, sure. Continue. So we can restart it. The nice thing is we can re reconstruct it very easily now that we've actually got to single story room. But so what was the issue again? I'm sorry. For the uh, was that uh, evidence? Evidence. Evidence. So we have um, our overall story is understanding senses versus interpretation. Actuality is the problem. The solution is perception. Hmm. That's an interesting question. Yeah. So in other words, you know, what he really is is the problem. You need to you need to make it look like it's something else, which of course the last, the last scene, scene is exactly what happens. <laughs> hmm. Intriguing. Um, maybe it isn't quite so such an add-on. Um, it's just their way of well, so recovering. The, so the solution of perception can write a Yes, yeah, it's success. It before the Robert review board. And also it. with him at the very oh. end. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's what they say. Oh, it's nothing. You know, yeah. this, this was something. It's a game. Out. Yeah, it's a game, right? <laughs> okay. um, the problem of self aware, that's the, definitely the problem they see of him having because he's not supposed to have any kind of self awareness. Okay. And it's like, okay, you got to go back into your machine mode. You know, don't forget don't, about yourself. Yeah. I'm saying, where's the problem of self aware? The, the symptom. The symptom. symptom. Okay. The, I'm sorry. I, did I say sense. problem? I apologize. It's symptom. Gotcha. So the apparent problem gotcha. is uh, self awareness. And then um, the catalyst instincts. So, in other words, his instinctive mm -hmm. responses to threats, which yeah. is what creates it's all sorts of like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> chaos. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, and inhibitor of prediction. Whenever we can predict his behavior, it's so oh, in terms of what their efforts are, they yeah. it, it slows everything. It slows yeah. the horror form. Yes, um, and his, and for him, as a protagonist, I'm sure that show up. I think the Ben Trotter containing you certainly have that in terms of the more more, you know, all these different pieces about who that being able to sort of. Pull together the pieces of the identity. Um, and also, just being oh. dreaming alive. So it starts off with learning, doing, obtaining, and ending in an understanding. I think that's really quite, that's a really excellent progression. Um, and we look at our main character, steadfast start, fear, linear thinker, is a fixed attitude or, you know, someone who's sort of driven. Um, Concerned with lack of memory, <laughs> it's loss of memory. Um, issue of evidence, uh, which we were talking about that because we actually selected that. Problem of ability, so he's got these whack, wacky abilities that just make no sense to him or who he thinks he is. Um, the symptom is self-awareness, so he thinks his problem is that he knows who he really is. And, and has a really good sense of who he is, but that's a completely in conflict with everything around him. And he has to get a, a better sense of sort of what other people are, the read on other people, um, rather than being so focused internally. Yeah. And that will allow him to, to overcome the problem. And that's really where he's able to focus on what that identity w w is as opposed to focusing on, you know, who he is. Um, it's not trying to, he's not trying to find himself because he lost himself. He's trying to find out what that uh, that exterior identity was, and eventually he goes, no thanks, I don't want that. You know, I can, now that I know what it is, I can let that go away. I, I can outlast that. His unique ability is truth. That's a really good one, yeah. I mean, he not only is he... He's not only searching for truth, but he is able to um, sort of get truth out of the 
the uh, people that he needs to in order to right. have this whole thing end successfully. And of course, this critical flaw situation. I mean, you know, here's a guy has he's a terrorist <laughs> or a a killer, and he has no memory of what he has done or who he is. But of course, everybody else doesn't have that same blind spot, so that puts them in a um, in a unique position and, where they can. And the try situation to is. There's a, an assassin trying to get him around practically every corner. Right. So, you know, he doesn't have the most compelling arguments go in his direction. No. Yeah. <laughs> and inter, his benchmark innermost desires, so he's basically trying to follow his heart. You know, and he, he does that more and more. That's that sort of that kindness that you were talking about. I believe that's really... But key, what you were talking about with him trying to be a good person, a kind person. I think that's we see that he, he seems to be generous, but he seems to give up more and more, and, and letting Marie go, or really not letting her go, pretty much forcing her away. You know, even though he's grown really attached to her emotionally, it's that's something that uh, we see him growing as a person. You know, we see that that, that effectiveness. And so it I, starts I was off. Thinking that there's some. A little bit of the impact character handoff, even because she she leaves a picture in the the guy played by uh, the British actor who he kills in the field. But, oh, uh, uh, Clive Owen. Yeah, that's a little bit of an impact character kind of thing because that's where he learns another perspective on where they came from. Right, the, a little bit of the you and I are just like yeah, that. right. Yeah. Um, and I like the this signpost met starting off with memory, you know, lack. Loss of memory being the first act, which is mm -hmm. terrific. Then impulsive responses. That's where you know he's not only when when the bank, but when they're in the he's mm -hmm. like focusing on it when they're in that restaurant and when they're you know all, suddenly he's just got all these whack out skills and re insanely quick responses. Yes. Can you say a quick question in terms of your uh, rebound and all that you were talking about the the character handout? Uh huh. The character handout. Is it because I remember the last time you talked about the fact that if when it's a handout, it needs to keep the same perspective. Uh, like like if it's a if it's a if it's a romance type of relationship, for instance. Not to say the same kind of relationship, but the same thematic. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. yeah the same. Yeah. Per, the same frame of yeah, reference. The, yeah. The same perspective. The, the nature perspective. of the relationship can be yeah. different, but the dealing with the same. Stuff. Dealing with the same stuff, okay. right? It's it makes it difficult if you're not even not even matching the same kind of relationship. But that's usually hard to have one person in a romance and then they have to go into another romance to have an yeah. influence character. No, because yeah. it's it's right. really about a perspective. When that perspective changes, then we're different. Mm -hmm. If but maybe it changes, it maybe there's an extra bit of thing. It could also be a part that's at, that illustrative of the main character through line, where you have another character that's in there just to. Yeah, to, to explore to that explore main character or, yeah. um, or in the overall story. So there are other places that could be. You can have other characters in the relationship through line that aren't the key players in the relationship, but they can have comment, make comments or, or yeah. make you know comments about yeah, relationships. That. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you can. It, it's not a... It's easy... Most readily understood when you put it in the body of a person or a player, yeah. but they you needn't be. Persons for right. It, it's that's that's a convenience of storytelling, and it's a it's a storytelling con um, convention. Yeah. But if you just imagine this being done as an animation, then all those kinds of physical issues yeah. go away because you can make, especially if it's something where they're not, again, just anthropomorphic anthropomorphic characters, but they're just things. Then you can easily see, okay, they are expressing that same position. Um, contemplation, you know, I, I, where he's, and, and ending with innermost desires, of course, which is really good, not only because he's, it's all sort of addressing his fears, because the things that he was most afraid that he probably was, he finds out, yes, in fact, you are this horrible person, um, uh, and 
you see him sort of have that confrontation in the last scene with Conklin. Uh, yes, I'm. That's not. That's not who I want to be. That's, that's my sort of my worst fear. Now, for our influence character, we've got. Um, we have her as a change character. Uh, right there, that pretty much rules out Conklin as a. A, re a realistic. Um, as a realistic influence character, because there's no way he changes. I mean, not even close. Um, he is a typical, you know, objective character where he just does his function and he does his function he's and he does until his until function. He's killed. Right, until, or until until he's neutralized, whether it's dead or made ineffectual or defeated, whatever. But and essentially, and the first they they had to handle somebody else killing him since Jason would never. I'm right, right, that. and they play on who's getting killed, and you know, there's a some story weaving, storytelling, fun, you know, mystery going on there. So you think that the assassin's going to kill Jason, and it's not Jason. It's uh, right. It's kind of fun. Right. So yeah, um, the issue, uh, the concern of the past. Again, I think it's do sort we, of weak. Do we talk about how she's a changed character? Um, sure. Did we? I, I no, we haven't. I didn't think so. I, yeah, because that's that's kind of thin. It's well, <laughs> it is. Well, again, the big, line, it, the big line was when she says, "Nobody's nice." Something like that. There's a line where she's very much down on human nature. She, the U.S. consul, just proved it to her, and you know, and so when he's doing all these things for her, like, nobody's just nice. Right. Nobody does something for nothing. For nothing. Yeah. It's nice. Right. And right. so by the end of Hey, I guess you do. Yeah. Didn't she want nothing to do with him in the beginning? Well, sure. Yeah. Um, and then at the end... Mm -hmm. but, but I think actually he's, in terms of her her situation is such that, remember, what this means is she's, she becomes a beer instead of... she's mm -hmm. a, Somebody is defined by her, her station in life, mm -hmm. um, which you see from her first and interaction with the, you know, she's she's not American, she's not treated well, um, and ultimately she's her own woman, and she's, you know, so you see there's a, uh, I mean, even with the interchange that the two of them have, you know, do you have an identity, you know, sort of playing on the, are you saying? She's embracing an identity as, as a compass. Right, right. Yeah, she's, she is a, but I think that's in the relationship. I know, but there's the cool the bank bag with the flowers in it and stuff. The what? In her store, she's hanging. There's a bank, the bank bag. Oh, the money has flowers. Oh, in it. It's like she's I've never even picked up on that. I don't know how many times I've seen oh, this. I never saw it. Yeah, it's really cool. It's so she kept the red bag. Yeah, and it's like she's embracing the fact that. She's oh, okay. That's great. I then she's a little clueless okay. about that. Yeah, that's, that's good. Story. No, that's excellent. That's an excellent example. Just be watching for her. Uh, no, he just runs over it and back and forth and back and forth. Because <laughs> I knew she was supposed to be changing. I'm like, why the heck is she changing? Ah, see, you were you were looking for this. Well, thank you. That's that's excellent. I will have to uh, I'll have to look at that. Okay, so um, does that help from a change? Yeah, I, I want to make sure that was discussed because that that, that it's thin. It's thin. It, it is thin. Also, um, because she's an influence character, the change happens off screen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just. You know, that's the normal thing. So when we see oh, her no. again, what, what, what is that? usually when you have a change influence character or change impact character, it happens off screen. Okay, it doesn't have to. No, it doesn't have to. It usually does for or two or reasons. Well, usually, often, okay. Uh, you're, I'm, you I'm you, sure you pick your word. 51% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't done, I haven't counted that many. Um, the reason there are two storytelling reasons why you would want to do that. One, it really makes sure your audience doesn't confuse who the main character is and who the step is and who the influence character is. That's one, because if they change and you're not paying a whole lot of attention to it, they're not making a big hoopla. As if the the author is not making a big deal of it on screen, that generally means okay, they're probably not the main character. If you haven't figured it out by that point, yeah. it's just one more way. But probably the bigger reason is that you can 
to the surprise. Yeah. The audience doesn't know, it. are they, in fact, a change character? They yeah. should be a change character, but we don't know until we see it. Yeah. And that's where we see yeah. I think yeah. the evidence was a little too subtle, because I sure as hell didn't pick up, and yeah. I've seen this the ending, I think, about four times. But I'm just looking at them. I'm not looking at the environment. But that's just me. I miss those kinds of things. But there was clearly they didn't want to be overt about it. They the interchange started off with the okay, you know, like they were originally, and then it kind of warmed up, and yeah, we're we're, we're a couple. So you know, okay, yeah, she's she's okay with him being whoever he is. Yeah, but yeah, she also kind of goes from being who's someone who's like out of control of her life into someone who's very clearly in charge of her life, and somebody very comfortable with who she is. Yeah. You know, which where he was. Yes, she's comfortable, right? And that's so she, because she had to adopt a new identity too, right? Or so that they wouldn't find her. Um. So anyway, yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out. Thank so, you. she and he are just a <laughs> just at different times. No, mm -hmm. actually, that one, yes. Um. And uh, well, then I was gonna say on her concern, yes. she's concerned about his past. Because she's kind of like, she wants to know who you are. He, she thinks he should know. And he keeps telling her, I don't know, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, she's asking him, and, he, and he's like, come on, you don't know? Come on. Like, I really, I'm telling you the truth. So. Okay. No, that's actually, a, that's a really good point. As an influence character, that's the, the she's constantly poking yeah. him there. And yeah. that pushes him. And, and that, and no, that's, that's it, excellent. It even confirms, like, Everybody should know their past. She thinks I should know my past. I think I should know my past, but now I really know I should know my past because that shared concern. Kind of and thing. also, that the there is an issue also for him. He he is influenced by her in that she's very nonchalant about her past, and he's like, "You have to understand, these guys will know everything about you." <laughs> You yeah. cannot do anything. Yeah. You cannot reconnect with anything to do with your past because they will find you. They'll find us because of that. You know, and, and of course that's how they track them down to the that farmhouse. I know and her call yeah. to Grammy, yeah. Granny or whatever. Um her mom, or whatever. I don't remember which one it was. Uh okay, so the issue of prediction. Um We'll certainly see interdiction. There's no question of that. Uh, I think for her, it, it's sort of like she's ex she's anticipating this is gonna it's gonna go a, a certain way, and it's constantly not going a certain. Way. I'm you know you're going to do blah 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 blah. It's like no, not, not, it's like you know it's constantly sort of predicting where this is going to lead, and he's like no no don't don't worry about it. That's not I don't that's not where I'm planning on going. Or this won't be a problem, you know. They won't find us by doing this. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or he does. He will give a prediction about if she does something, it will lead to such and such, and she ignores it. You know, mm -hmm. making a phone call, connecting to you know friends, doing any of that, that kind of stuff, any of the stuff that she used to do. Um, a problem of actuality. So. Let's see. Well, first of all, let's look at the symptoms. So, what she, what does she think her problems? Problems is she thinks that she's got probably too much change going on. She needs yeah. to put things back the way things yeah. were. Yeah, she had to cool, cool off. It's which, of course, the boat here. what? It's the boat. Right, which is why she's constantly trying to get out of the car, so to speak. You know, they're out of the car, but you know, trying to let me just get back. He's like, no, you don't want to do this right now. Trust me, you don't want to do this. Um, the problem of actuality. So it's response. Hmm. You're saying what is that response? Her problem of actuality. So. Well, maybe she's just focused on. Uh, Well, she's, not, she's not aware of her. She's not aware of her. She's the change character, so she's not aware of her problem. No. Um, actuality. So the reality. She's not aware of the true state of things. 
Can it be connected well, to him? Couldn't be. Well, it doesn't matter what. It can. It can. Can it be that her problem is that she is actually she she she's a she she she's a she she can't lie, latch on anything else than than the actuality of who he is. Once when she figures that he's 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 this killer, and then once she sort of gives into her perception of him, which is different from who he everyone is saying he is, then it. Then she puts the flower in this one. So I can deal with that. Yeah, that, that works. Yeah, well, Jeff, were you going to say something? Um, I was thinking, couldn't the, um, if it's a steadfast character, couldn't the person no, change or change? Um, couldn't well, couldn't the person be aware of the problem? They just figure it, it'll. Uh, they they they'd rather not touch it. They'd rather deal with the symptom. They could be aware. No, not really. In, in the nature of a, when you have a change character, the nature of their growth is that they're driven by the problem, the thing that's actually what's causing conflict for them. And they can't see it because of whatever backstory they brought them to that place, but they're focused on the symptom, and they think the response is going to solve their problems. In reality, after they go through the act turns and tearing down those blinders, eventually they can see the real problem, which I think it is actually actually is that there she is she is in real trouble mm -hmm. I mean she's not just a there there's a real threat to her life and he's trying to get rid of her and it's not until she finally goes oh crap there really is something there's a here here you know that she sort of accepts the, the idea of okay I'm going to go pretend I'm gonna go become a, a pretend character I have to go make up a new life you know, I have to right. I have to play a perce I have to create a perception right. of who I really am, which is what he was all about before he met her. Um, and but it's not until she actually sees the real that really, really this is a serious that she is in serious doo doo that she has she can change because she as long as she thinks well no if we just go back the way things were everything will be fine it's not going to happen because the world is not going to be accommodating to her. The overall story is not going to be very, you know, she's going to get killed. So, yeah, usually, so Jeff, the, the, the answer is that only in a change character, they really won't be aware of their problem until toward the end of the story consciously. Um, sometimes they're never really consciously aware of it, they might be, it may just sort of, they might eventually, you know, gradually change because they, they're sort of explored, but they're not really thinking about it. Those are those non deep of faith stories like Hamlet. Um, you know, it, he's, he never really realizes that thought is his problem. He just eventually embraces knowledge and, and by the end when, you know, he's, shown that his uncle has killed his mom, he doesn't think about it, he just acts. So that's how we know he's in fact changed. But there's no moment where he goes, you know, I really just think about two things too much, and I don't know, just go with what I know. You know, that's just not that kind of a story. So you can have characters be aware of it, but usually they don't they don't become aware of it until the last act. So, that, you know, that that's really the area which if someone has a a leap of faith, that's what the leap of faith is about. Is that they go, okay, I'm either I either I go with my my response is the solution to my problem, or I actually have to adapt. I really recognize that this thing called problem is my problem and the solution will hopefully resolve it. Um, unique ability fate, I think that's great. That's a really good one because basically, you know, the, the connect they just happen to be, she happens to be at the right place at the right time, he happens to have the money that she, you know, all these things just sort of faded events constantly bring them together and, and, and have her put, you know, putting the stronger position to address the other No, undermines it. Well, you undermines see, they really, it, it, because well, see, the, the unique ability the undermines the main character, so it puts her in a position of being threatened. You know, of a weakness, it's which a burden for him. because she's changed. No, unique ability has to do with 
The unique ability of the influence character Undermine. is the quality that undermines the main character's oh, unique ability. Gotcha. And critical flaw of senses. It would seem like she doesn't. She doesn't. Does she? Is she overly sensitive or un, or? He not does sensitive? throw. Up, she does throw up on the way out of the apartment. Right. Okay. That would be more detrimental. Um. Right. Which I mean, again, it sort of undermines that that unique ability. It's something that undermines the effectiveness of the unique ability. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to, and nothing else comes to mind so much. The future, I think, works really well as a benchmark, because she always, she does seem to be looking like, well, here's where I want to go. Ultimately, I want, here's what I want to do with my future. I want to set up a shop on the coast and do rent out, whatever. You know, so that does seem to be, be good. Um, I don't know the act structure. Well, the past is that when do they do all the they do the research on her? Is that in the first the, act or is the first it? Act yeah. When he meets her in the end. And they, they the get the they get the images oh. and they start doing all the okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now that works. I mean, that works great. Right. right. Yeah. Oh right. Um. And then let's look at the relationship. Like a sample for the present. Talk about being comfortable in her own skin. Right. That's the evidence there. Yeah. yeah. Present. Um, and I think when you look at both how things are changing in the future, I think they're both look, they're both seen as negatives. They look at you know how things are falling apart, and you know questioning whether or not well, there's going to be a get away from here so you can't have a future. Yeah. Here's some money. <laughs> I mean that that's how she has the shop. Right. Scooter shop now. Right? Because of the uh, red bag. So now to answer your question earlier, aside from the change issue. Um, can we see Conklin in the signpost four? Does that does it make sense in terms of? Um, I mean, you could see actuality and perception a little bit, prediction perhaps the past definitely, um, and the present in the, the so that actually that's not so bad. I mean, I could see him. Substitute in that last scene, yeah. really sort of speaking to those elements because she's definitely absent. Yeah, in her head, yeah. Strong. Conklin's trying to bring him back into the moment. Right, response inertia. You know, right. yeah. You know. No matter what you've experienced recently, this is who you are because I made you this way, and you you got to stay this way. And right, and then he then, yeah, he tries to you know deal with the. I think the the actuality perception change and all of those are really part of that last scene. It just sort of jumbled together, but not in a not in a bad way. I don't mean they're but they, they those those elements definitely seem to be in the that scene where he confronts Kampa. Um Kampa makes him remember, but that's only to remember so he'll be back where he's supposed to be. He bring well, yeah, he basically forces the past on him. Yeah. And he which Echoes into his memory, and he, he remembers. Um, now, in the relationship, we have manipulation, which I think is, you know, um, I think it's it's good. I think psych psychology is a little better. It's not more, not so much of being manipulated, except maybe that last scene between conflict. But it's really more about about sort of a psychological cat and mouse. Try, how can we work together, kind of thing. How can we developing a plan? How can we make this work? Um, you know, and as as it goes on, it's like, well, we're getting stronger and stronger relationship, but I'm really not likely we're going to make able to make this thing work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's excellent. Yeah, and they're stuck. They're stuck together. Yeah. Uh, self aware, aware um, is the symptom. Symptom, you know. Again, looking at it from kind of goes both ways. Yeah, and I think also equity and inequity. You see the, the the conflict in the relationship where he's he's constantly trying to make sure everything's fair, and that seems to she doesn't buy that. You know, she's just like, well, why are you doing this? You know, how can it, or, this doesn't make sense? He's trying to give her the, the money, the 
the hour saver life. You know, it just creates more conflict. It's like, nope, <laughs> get the heck back in here. You're gonna. Um, catalyst of state of being. Uh, boy, what? So, the, what are some scenes where the their their relationship is um, takes a real fast step forward? Is there a scene? scene? Huh? She reacted. Yeah, I'd certainly the, the scene of the, the farm, you see this. What's the definition of state of being? State of being is essentially <laughs> the, scene in, the scene where um, she's in, uh, they're in the car, and he's telling her, this is going to get bad, it's going to get worse, you need to go. And she's like, no, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I want to smack her. I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a step forward in their relationship, and it oh, was yeah. kind of sudden. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah. So state of being is of, you're running out of time, and she stays in the car. Right. State of being is is just sort of like who you are at the moment, as opposed to changing your nature. It's it's you know like being mad as opposed being angry as opposed to being you know. Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a transitive yeah, yeah. form of it. So it's the little, punctual. Right, right. It's just of the moment, being very um, spontaneous. Um, uh, I noticed that the there are evidence. Uh, gosh, doesn't she? Isn't there different evidence that pops up that just sort of cools the jets between the two of them? Um, well, yeah, I mean, when when she clearly finds out that he's an assassin, she is ready to go then. Um, oh, okay. He chases her across the street and pins her to the wall. You know, she says, well, you're an assassin, why should I trust you? Well, I'm sorry, I don't remember what happened before that. Isn't the catalyst and the relationship just supposed to be like Also, that? when they're staying at, at her uh, her ex's house, far, okay. at the farmhouse, um, he sleeps on the floor. And I'm sorry. This what were you speak? Well, this was. But when okay, so they go to her ex's, which is the farmhouse, and there's I I didn't see exactly what happened, um, but he sleeps on the floor. Right. And then goes out. So there. like the guy is giving them them pajamas, and she turns around to look at him, and he walks around the bed and drops to the floor. Oh. Right. Now, what are you saying that's an Ill illustration of? That's an illustration of their relationship slowing down. Okay. Um, and it, uh, oh, oh, yeah, I, I yeah, wasn't is, quite sure what the motivation was. It could have been jealousy. It could have been... Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think that we you, he finds out that, you know, he figures out, you know, the evidence is that, oh, this is an ex-boyfriend. This isn't just someone you know. This is a, boy, a boyfriend, which again, as you say, cools off their relationship. So, which one of the two do you think to argue more? The catalyst. The catalyst. Catalyst. But so, so, so the, or move the relationship forward. Okay. Is, is the, so, to me, uh, the, the evidence part where like she learns about him uh, being an assassin, which, which of course, I mean, she's so no, but that, that sounds like the catalyst then because it generates issues. Yeah, it, 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 no, it actually is because of her reaction to it, because she gets all freaked. But if she was, under inhibitors, right? No, no, no. So you have to think of the relationship as something that's growing towards. So the inhibitors going to keep them from coming together. Right. So no, evidence will slow things down, slow the relationship growth. So okay. this evidence kind of puts a kibosh on the budding romance because, holy crap, you're a you know, you're an assassin. Whereas, you're an assassin. whereas mm, I was arguing, just, arguing is actually still productive in the sense that it's growing. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. And if it's if it's that if it's if it's that kind of thing, or if they're they're having fun, or they're having doing something where it's it's um, sort of a transitive thing, or someone gets let's say there's a moment where I think she's sort of feeling really either down or, or, or frightened, that brings him closer to her. You try to, you know, in terms of... So it doesn't the, necessarily mean conflict. No, 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 no. It, no, it's it's not conflict. 
the way that you, you look at it is that the sex you've got this budding, in this case, it's a growing romance. Certain things are going to make it grow faster, like plant food, you know, for the rapid, and the certain things are going to retard it. It's the break and the accelerator. Conflict usually is an indicator that <coughs> things are moving faster, but not always forward. So it, it it's just, is this going to enhance the relationship, or is it going to retard the relationship? Okay, so conflict can be in any of the two. Yes, and absolutely. Absolutely. What's interesting about that scene that you referred to where she, you know, he learns and she learns that he was an assassin, and she acts all upset and I can't do it, but at the same time, there is that subtext. Of, but I don't really want to leave you. I really don't want to go away. There, you can see that subtext in her eyes yeah. uh, and in her demeanor. So there is that that kind of that state of being. What the yeah, relationship yeah, yeah, is yeah. is something that she's not a hundred percent willing to give up. Yeah. That, it, even well, in that but same maybe, moment. But maybe that also that might be more indicative of the benchmark changing with nature. So in other words, is the relationship is growing as they're who they are. Becomes it more, becomes more important more than important. Yeah. what the evidence would show that she, you know, what uh, more objectively uh, should do. Right. More objectively should go away. There's also for for the catalyst and the state of being when they're just when they just be they're in the hotel room in the hostel, um, and there's at least a kissing scene, if not an actual sex scene. And then she wakes up in bed. Yeah, and and then he's wiped down the whole place and has been watching her sleep. Right, which is not creepy at all. So getting rid of that evidence. <laughs> 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 well, again, you know, evidence slows things down. Yeah. Um, I think this is a really good story form. Surprisingly quickly gotten to. Yeah. There is more depth in this story than I expected. Yeah. Happens some well, well, it, it's usually hard to find them in thrillers or mysteries because there's so much misdirection. Right. But I mean, I ha I haven't done it. I had not done a story form of this before. But because of the fact that I know I can watch it over and over again, mm -hmm. it generally gives something me a good idea. Well, yeah, I mean, it gives me an idea that there's probably a story, a good story there, just mm -hmm. because. I enjoy it each time it's I see it. Yeah. But but at the same time, there's still, you know, it's like, okay, so what exactly is Treadstone? And what exactly is the circumstance of him losing his memory? Which I know is dealt with in you know, the subsequent movies. Well, see, and, and but, the thing but still, is that... I still left those, that big question mark in my first time I saw it. And right, even the right. second time I saw it, it's like, yeah, but you didn't answer some of these <laughs> questions. Because that's, because that's not what the story's about. And that's why I wanted to put oh. up the protagonist and antagonist. Right, right. It's not about finding out about what Treadstone is. It's finding about getting, <laughs> finding out, <coughs> understanding who he was. Yeah, still, there, it's still. I, 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 I'm, I'm missing the context of what exactly Treadstone was really all about. Right. Well, so, that's because they had a sequel. They wanted yeah, to, because that's yeah. what the second one Treadstone is all about. Is all about. Because I, I, you know, it's just like I know I saw this movie, but I can't remember it all. And I, you know, I'm watching. Go, okay, yeah, that looks familiar. And, and I think part of the reason I forgot is because uh, it, it, the, 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 these, these these unanswered questions just kind of well, I can't answer them, so I'm just going to kind of erase it. Right. You know. Well, <laughs> and ultimately, they don't matter because they don't they aren't part of the story form. You well, see, I mean, no, they aren't. No. But that's okay. why but, they okay. could do the second movie, which is all about what Treadstone was. I mean, it's completely about that. It's Which like, I saw, too, but I still don't even remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I can't... Yeah, in, terms, in terms of the overall context, objectively speaking, I think I'm still less confused. You know, oh, no, second. really? Well, I don't They know. basically get people, uh, and they wipe out, they wipe their personality clean, turn them into ultimate trained assassins, mm -hmm. and they'll do whatever they tell them to do. That's all it was. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, and of course there are different versions of that depending on which movie you're watching because they have in the most the yeah. the, the Bourne supremacy or the the, the Bourne uh, no the what's the most recent one Legacy. Legacy. That was the Chris Pine. Yeah. No. 
It's Renner. not Chris Pine. It's Mar- J- Jeremy Renner. Renner. Oh, oh, oh. Is that a fourth one? No, no that's Chris the, Pine. the fourth Chris one. Pine's yeah, yeah with Jeremy. Okay, yeah, sorry. Jeremy now, does Renner. that seem like a, a trilogy and then they added a fourth one? Anybody who's seen it, does it seem like yeah. added on? Or? Yes, it's a fourth one. Well, no, what they did is they have... It's the Born Le- uh, Legacy, and it happens in between and simultaneously oh. with two and three. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So it's it's actually it's like paralleling um, part of, actually part of three and then a little bit past three, but it's around the same time because they have the whole, uh, the end of, of Legacy happens about the same mm-hmm. time as the end of three. Because right. they've even referenced uh, t- uh, Landry in that, and you know her making a comment about the whole, yeah. uh, the whole thing, after she had you know faxed off the documents and what what was happened subsequent to that. Was so, Landry the oh. after uh, Saving Private Ryan? Yes. Right. It's because I got the sense that they really were playing on Matt Damon as sort of this heartland kind of kid who John Deke was too too pure to stay up an assassin. I mean it was. It was a lot of that, the way he looked at it. It just was interesting. That I don't know. I thought, it, I thought it worked really well. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot different than the books. Oh, yeah. Considerably yeah. different than the books. I think I read somewhere, though, that, that Ludlum said, I was trying to create American James Bond, so I did the same right. initials. Yeah. Oh, well, wow. Makes sense. Right. Okay. Was well, oh, next was one's Lent. not work, guys. <laughs> oh, yes, Jeff. Yeah. Um, uh, two comments. One, uh, there I found on YouTube. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, there's a lot. Hey. I, hey. I found on YouTube while waiting around for the uh, for the session to begin. There's uh, Born Born Identity 1988. I don't know if it's it seems like a made for TV movie, but the whole movie seemed to be there. Uh, not saying it. Yeah, it's with recognizable actors in it. Yeah, there's Born Identity. Uh, supremacy. Born, it was the same one as this one. I think that's the four that I've done so far. Yeah. Um, was Landry? Uh, I can't remember the actress's name. She was um, the one. She was like the adjunct. She, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Joan. Yes. Uh, Joan Allen. Yes, yeah, Joan Allen, from Pleasantville. Oh no, the the young one, the young blonde. Sorry. Oh, Julia Stiles, the one who played the, uh, the this sort of yeah, the, yeah, Julia Stiles, um, who is the very one as well. Yeah, um, I was trying to figure out what kind of character roles she had. That, not necessarily that they're archetypes, but she seemed like a support and then sidekick and. Yeah, she's just a she's. I don't know that she has much of a function in this movie other than being a, a logistical part of you know character. I don't think she she really has a. A story function in it, whereas her role in the the next one is quite significant, and even in the last one too. Yeah, she's the, so the the latter two she actually has a much much bigger role. They're setting her up. Yeah, because the the um, the second and third are kind of sort of one story. Uh, you know, literally, the third one picks up. Immediately where the last one left off. So, it even though they they resolve the main character through line portion in uh, the second film, the overall story goes over the entirety of the two. Um, sort of. I mean, it, it it part of it wraps up at the end of two, and then there's still leftover stuff that they deal with on the on the third one. Um, if I remember correctly, it has to do with the Russian, the Russian, the hit that he did, that started him all off. That's resolved. The main character story that's resolved um, in in two, and then they go into that other one that's in three. So it's been a while. So the third one is not as strong. It has a little bit of it, it has a little bit of sequelitis to it. The second one though is, is Really quite good. Yeah. Joan Allen's really good. Joan Allen's great. Well, she's good in everything. Yeah, she is. Um, you haven't seen The Candidate? Yeah. The also. Candidate? The yeah. Contender? Contender. No. The Contender. Yes, not The Candidate. The Contender. 
Yeah, yeah she's phenomenal in that. Okay, well, next month is, I think, is a real fun one, right? Oh, uh, yes, La Dolce Vita. Now, that's a three hour movie. <laughs> What's your name, Willie? La Dolce Vita. The Sweet Life in Italian. Um, yeah. Now, of those who are here, I, I'm going to I'm going to start it at five. It's not something that you can easily rent. I don't believe. Uh, you gonna um, start at five or you gonna start at four? Is well, I don't know how many of you can actually that, make it at four. Is that yeah, Fleen. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, let me know. I mean, I'll, I'm willing to start it at four. That's not a problem. I just want to make sure. You, you know, people can make it because yeah, most people can't cool. make it that early. Um, can you make it a four o'clock five? I'm gonna get five. I think I wanna uh, think that Robert Monty was referring to Fellini at Fellini as he was painting in his non flat section. Well, we'll find out, yeah, won't we? I have not seen it. Oh, I watched it. I watched it a few years ago. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that means probably non plot. If you can't remember a whole lot of it, that usually means there's not much of a plot. Well, we'll see. Well, so, so, are you, so you're saying you might just start meeting at 8? Yeah. That's a little helpful when I set this is up. It, is the movie in yeah, English? I think so. I think we should do that. Oh, help tell you, right? Yeah, I think we should, I think, because I think we should start the, the talk a little later. I don't want to go till that much later. I want to just. See if we can do it in an hour and a half. Um, so start immediately at eight, and and then go after that. But it's it's just a long movie, and uh, okay. if you're gonna have any chance of seeing it, unless you can rent it, I mean, a lot of people can rent it. So if you can watch it at home, it's probably I think the best. It's at the bet. public library. Yeah, it's right in the library. And I'm sure it's on Netflix, or it's probably even you know downloadable, you know, streamable, whatever. But I have a nice version of it. I have yet to watch it, so I will, I will probably watch it ahead of time. So I have more than one viewing. <laughs> um, and then the rest of the year, we've got uh, Sweet Smell of Success. No, I'm sorry, The Importance of Being Earnest. The, Earl, the fifth, is it 52? What is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 52. So the uh, black and white version. Um, the Sweet Smell of Success, which I've never seen, but that has got. got Phenomenal reviews. Full Hand Luke, the producers, and then our, and then our uh, the originals producers. I think I have it right. I want to be a producer. I think I do it. A funny movie that they're producing. And then we will do our hundred percent. Well, thank you all. And if I'm if if you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask and. But uh, thank you guys for joining us on uh, online. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for the song. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone.